Many of you may currently be working on a dashboard to be shared with the public. Something important to consider is that a large portion of website traffic is generated by mobile devices, so it's really important to make sure that the dashboards display properly on different kinds of screen sizes. So one solution is uh, brought to you by Experience Builder and um, this handy trick of combining a mobile friendly dashboard with the one that you've configured and created for desktop users was presented in this blog here and I'll link the blog in the comments below. So what Experience Builder does is it detects if the user is looking at content on a large or small device and then delivers content specific to that device. And that specific content is either a desktop version dash dashboard or a mobile friendly version dashboard that you have already configured. So this workflow requires three different items. The first one is that desktop version of your dashboard. What we're looking at here is a COVID-19 Canadian outbreak dashboard. It was created by Esri Canada and um, the second piece is a the same dashboard but uh, configured for mobile devices. It has all the same content but as you can see it's stacked vertically. This is following best practices and the different maps and charts are then stacked on top of one another to conserve uh, your screen real estate. Now the third um, ingredient or the third item as part of this workflow is a blank full screen experience builder app. And we can get started from ArcGIS Online. It's now available from your app launcher. And what we'll do is we'll create a new experience a blank full screen app. If you're new to Experience Builder, I'll give you a quick run through of the user interface. Up top, we have our header bar. We can provide a title, which I'll do really quickly. I get a um, overview of the published status. So right now this experience is still a draft. It's not published yet. Uh, the other items that are currently um, or that are useful for this specific workflow, you can view your page um, and how it will display for different screen sizes. So this is a large screen. This is what it would look like or this is your page um, for a medium sized screen and a small size screen. You have uh, further control over how it will display for different screen dimensions. Best practice is to always configure with the smallest screen size in mind if you're going to create an application that's um, going to be published or um, shared with a wider, more general audience. And then you've got some very general editing uh, tools that you might be familiar with, like Undo Redo, saving the experience, previewing it before it's published, and finally publishing it. So we're going to start by configuring for the uh, large screen size. To um, streamline the editing process in uh, Experience Builder, all you need to do is drag and drop the different widgets that you're uh, interested in. The only widget that we're, we're going to be using in this workflow is the embed widget. So I've already dragged and dropped it and I could um, drag to resize. But one thing just to make sure that everything uh, is positioned properly, I'm going to use the configuration panel on the right hand side. Make sure that the widget is occupying 100% of the width and height and that it's positioned properly. So with that done, what I can do is add the uh, appropriate content and what I'm going to do is embed the web address. Because I'm configuring for the large screen, we're going to grab that dashboard URL for the desktop view. We'll add that URL. And so at this point, uh, the display for the desktop users is configured. So we're going to move on to configuring the smaller screen size. So I've changed um, the uh, edit option. We're now editing for a small device. And I want to bring your attention to these two options, auto and custom. Right now, the auto layout is enabled, meaning that widgets are synced with those on the large screen and then arranged automatically. For that reason, we're going to enable the custom layout so that we can manually edit this screen size. 
So keep in mind that you can always reverse this by selecting auto once again. So now that custom is selected, I can select that widget and by selecting it, an additional menu appears. So there's a few options here uh, that allow us to arrange um, the position and um, orientation of the widget. We can lock the layout and the position and size of that widget. We can move it to the pending list or delete it entirely. So it's really important at this point that you do not delete this widget. Instead, you're going to move it to the pending list. What we're going to do next is add a new embed widget. Make sure that, again, it uh, occupies 100% of that page. And what we'll do is we'll grab the URL for the mobile friendly dashboard. What I'll do is copy and add the proper web address. And then what uh, we are left with is that both dashboards will be combined under a single URL. So I'm just going to save and publish this really quickly. And I'd like to show you what this looks like. So we'll preview it. This is how it would look on a desktop. And if we use a inspect really, really quickly, this is how it would look um, on an iPhone screen, for example. So as you can see, we get that mobile friendly dashboard experience. So just to recap, we combine the desktop dashboard and the mobile dashboard into a single application that will select the appropriate content for the appropriate screen. So like Mike and Kenyon mentioned in the blog, you've got two dashboards and one intelligent URL. So I've linked that URL in the uh, comments. If you found this video helpful and would like to see more content about ArcGIS dashboards or ArcGIS Experience Builder, don't forget to like this video and feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below. If you'd like to see more videos by Esri Canada, you can subscribe to our channel using the subscribe button um, below. And thank you so much.